Welcome back to the second half of Newsbreak Live. And joining me is recently sworn in Torrance Police Chief Eve Irvine. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? It's such an honor to have you, and thank you for joining me on my show tonight. Thank you. It's my honor to be here. Chief Irvine, you began your career in 1982, and then you led the Manhattan Beach Police Department for more than six years. Most recently, how has your journey been to this point? You know, it's been exciting. It's been rewarding. It's been... Um, an amazing journey. I never would have thought about this uh, being at this place at this time in 1982 when I first started in law enforcement. And you started in Inglewood, correct? I did. I began my career in 1982 as a police cadet um, doing non-hazardous police duties and then I worked my way up through uh, the police ranks as a police officer up to the rank of captain and then I left the Inglewood Police Department in 2011 to become the police chief of the Manhattan Beach Police Department where I worked until recently being uh, sworn in as the police chief of Torrance. And you have a very impressive background and you have experience in a lot of different assignments. Is there anything um, that I guess is close to your heart or that really has stuck with you over the years? Um, children, uh, protecting children, also partnering uh, with our community. You know, community partnership is just an amazing um, way to make all of the goals and objectives of the police department come true uh, because when you partnership with your community, uh, you can solve a lot of crimes, you can solve a lot of problems, and it's a great way for us to do police work. What made you start a pursuit, per, excuse me, what made you pursue a career in law enforcement? I always knew I wanted to help people. I wanted to help protect those who couldn't protect themselves. And I really wanted to be a superhero, but that <laughs> job was already taken. So I did the next best thing and became a police officer. Great. And now you're the police chief of the Torrance Police Department. How has um, the transition be been and now you're joining a department which is in one of the largest cities in Los Angeles County? Yeah, there's been an extreme difference. Um, in Inglewood, it's, the size is about the same as it is with the Torrance Police Department, but we went from Inglewood to the Manhattan Beach Police Department and then the Manhattan Beach Police Department to the Torrance Police Department, so there has been a significant learning curve, but it's great. It's, the department is three times larger than the, uh, the Manhattan Beach Police Department, but on par about the same for the uh, Torrance Police, uh, to the Inglewood Police Department. And you recently were sworn in during the city council meeting. So how was that being there with um, so much support? It was a standalone room. Officers from various South Bay agencies were there. It was overwhelming, actually. You know, I don't normally like to be the spotlight. I just <laughs> wanted to go in and just do my thing and then be sworn in and go back to my office. But there were a lot of people there. And what was really wonderful was not only the community support, because you're right, it was standing room only, but to see the support of all of the uniformed officers, there were over 100 uniformed officers there showing their support, and that was um, truly humbling and very honoring. And you are also making history by being the first woman police chief for the city of Torrance, and while I know this is something you probably don't want to be defined as, tell me, what does being a police chief mean to you? You know, it's very, very, um, it's an honor to be a police chief. It's very humbling, though, because when I look around, when I drive around the city of Torrance, I realize I'm responsible for everyone's public safety here. So that can be extremely uh, humbling uh, just to ensure that everybody's safe. It means a lot to me. Somebody always, you know, I don't want to be defined by being uh, the first female police chief mm -hmm. of the city of Torrance, but I understand that people recognize that. Obviously, they see and I'm <laughs> a woman, um, but, you know, I would love to just say, you know, she was hired because she was the right person for the job. She had the skill set and all the qualifications to be the police chief. And I'm sure your story is very inspiring to a lot of women out there as well. Thank you. You know, I, I got I to gotta give a lot of credit to my aunt. She was the first police officer, female police officer of the Hawthorne Police Department. Oh, wow. And so she kind of broke the, the glass ceiling for all of us, and it made it a little bit easier for each and every one of us to live our dream. Great story, and you are in the transition, so tell me some policies or goals you're hoping to accomplish. So one of the things we're going to do is continue to um, enhance our service to the community. Uh, we're going to look at some of our traffic safety. We, had, we did see an increase in uh, fatal traffic collisions in 2017, so we're going to try to work on some of our traffic safety enhancement um, and our measures to reduce the number of uh, fatalities we had. We're also going to revisit policies and procedures um, we're going to go into the body-worn cameras. We just got 
the uh, council approval to purchase body-worn cameras, which will certainly help with our transparency within the community. But it's also going to help with uh, the recovery of evidence um, and evidence pr uh, protection. So that'll, that'll help us out quite a bit. But there's a lot to do, and there's a lot of stuff. Eventually, we're going to have a strategic plan, but uh, that'll come a little bit later on in the year. And what a, um, about the various areas your department is focusing on at the moment? I know it kind of goes hand in hand with the question I just asked you, um, but I know you mentioned to me some of the propositions that have gone into effect that have affected how things work. Yes, yeah, so AB 109, which was enacted in the, at the end of 2011, that was the realignment bill, and that really affected us. That was where they took uh, the the state decided to take people from the uh, corrections level, you know, federal, federal or the state level, and bring them down and realign them to the local level. Well, there's only so many beds at the local level where these people could be housed, so they were releasing a lot of folks. So that, then the next year we had Prop 47, which was uh, took a lot of felonies and made them into misdemeanors, including a lot of drug charges. And then the next year following that, we had Prop 57, which was the uh, enhancement of public safety. And so it was, there was a lot of hits all at once, and it certainly affected crime within not only the city of Torrance, but within all the state of California. Everybody's trying to catch up to trying to deal with folks that are in our communities now without having um, ways to assist them in getting you know, work um, and housing. And so that's made it quite challenging. So we all have to deal with that as well, just like everyone else in the state of California, all the local municipalities. Any other top priorities you can tell me about? Other than really focusing a lot on um, continuing to serve the community, but traffic safety is going to be big for us in mm -hmm. 2018, just to ensure the safety of our uh, public. A lot of our fatal uh, traffic collisions involve pedestrians, and some of them were jaywalking, and some of them it was mm -hmm. at night, and they were crossing, so we want to try to educate the community educate our drivers and just make it a safe all-around place for all of us. Great, and you did mention the body cameras and that was something I was going to bring up to you because it was the funds were recently approved by City Council. What does that mean um, for your department having the state-of-the-art, it's one-of-a-kind equipment to help keep crime rates lower and um, in the city? Well, we're going to have it, we have it on two fronts actually. We're going to have in-car cameras so mounted on all of our police cars, we'll have cameras to capture evidence or traffic collisions, uh, pursuits. That will help us. And then we also have body-worn cameras where each of our officers will be wearing cameras on their, on their uniforms to collect any evidence and to be transparent to our community as well. But it certainly helps us and it's beneficial to all parties involved. That will be really interesting to f um, see that on the police officers and how it will help with future incidents. It's really been a great, it's, you know, I know that sometimes police, they think police officers are afraid to have the body-worn cameras, mm -hmm. and sometimes our community is afraid that Big Brother's watching, but that's not what the intent is at all for this. And they recently did it, uh, we in, uh, enhanced it with the Manhattan Beach Police Department, and that was, it really rolled out very, very well, and it was so well received by not only the community, but the officers. So I'm hoping that will happen here as well. It's a benefit. It's absolutely a benefit. And that will definitely be exciting, and there's another topic that, um, has been of high importance to the community, the progression of combating coy the coyote population. Do you have an update for viewers at home? Yeah, the good news is in the last two years since we started a really, um, you know, a campaign on how to deal with coyotes, whether it's to educate our community on uh, not leaving food out or how to haze, you know, when you make yourself larger than life to scare off the coyotes, mm -hmm. or being careful and being aware when you walk your animals. The um, deaths of animals by coyotes has decreased dramatically just over the last two years, and we're hoping it decreases even more because the coyotes are in our community, and we have to live with them, so we need to ensure that our animals are protected, the people are protected, and we need to do that by education and awareness. And that's been working out really, really well. Great. I know there's a plan in place as well, so that's shown to be very good as well. Yeah, and we, we have put that out to the entire South Bay community because it's not just Torrance that's dealing with mm -hmm. the coyote management, urban coyote management, but it's all of the South Bay cities as well. So we're all, we all get together uh, frequently and discuss the different issues and the concerns and some of the uh, trends that we're seeing with the coyotes. So it's, uh, it's been great getting together with all of the other communities. And he, on the management level, how are you going to bring your team together and continue to keep that teamwork happening? 
You know, the Torrance Police Department is such a great police department. And I got to tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. I got I to brag on them. Um, we solve crimes like I have never seen in any police department that I've ever worked for or even been around. I mean, the clearance rate for some of the crimes that uh, we solve is just phenomenal. And that's really such a great service to our community. But bringing the team together, I mean, they're a great team anyway, and I want to help enhance that by being a part of it. But the team is there, and the team is solid, and it's a great place to live. It's a great place to work. Um, you know, Torrance is just a really, really great community. And please, Chief Eve Irvine, is there anything else you'd like to tell viewers about yourself and joining the Torrance Police Department? I know this is very unique. They get to see a personal side of you as well thank, on the show. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here. We are hiring. So if you're interested, contact the Torrance Police Department. We are hiring for several different positions within the organization, not just for police officer, but for some of our civilian support staff as well. It's a great, um, great department to work for. Very rewarding career as well, helping the community. So if you are so inclined to help the community and really make a difference and have a rewarding uh, experience in your career and in your life, join the Torrance Police Department. And this is for various positions within the department? Yes, it's not only for sworn, for police officers, but we have some uh, of our clerical staff, we have some in records, public safety dispatchers. Um, we have several different positions, some of our analysts uh, that are support staff. They are, um, they are not sworn officers, but there are support staff, our civilian staff within uh, the police department. I know for some people, we've done a story on the hiring process with the Torrance Police Department. It can be intimidating, but is it an easy process? <laughs> Not an easy process. <laughs> I even had to go through it. There's a lot of things that are required because we want to ensure, especially for police officers, we want to ensure that the people that we put mm -hmm. out in the field to protect us um, have it all together and can do the right thing. So we do significant background checks. We check for financial um, stability, we check for if anybody's been arrested, and that's not a complete uh, disqualifier e either, um, but we, we do a, an in-depth. We'll go into your neighbors and ask your neighbors if you're a good neighbor, if you're a cooperative neighbor, if you have a lot of loud parties at your house. We certainly look at drug use. We look at many different factors, but it is not an easy uh, process. For instance, we might give a test and 100 people take it. Mm -hmm. And by the time we get down to whether people are going to pass the physical agility, people are going to pass the written exam, people are going to pass the oral examination, by the time we get down to it, the people that get into backgrounds is just a, a minute number of that. And by the time that we hire people, we may only hire one or two off of that 100-person oh, wow. list. So it's pretty significant. People can, can get more information on TorrenceCA.gov and go into the police department's page as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have lots of information all about it. And it's not a scary process. We can help walk you through it. Great. Well, Police Chief Eve Irvine, thank you so much for joining me on, on my show. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me here. Have a good night. You as well. Well, that does it for Newsbreak Live. Torrance City Council has the night off. And if you ever have news or video that you'd like to share, please email us at newsbreak at torrentca.gov. For Facebook and Twitter users, use hashtag Newsbreak Live. Have a great night.